because if like my doorman knows who I am. I came downstairs to get a package that I missed in like a a penguin <laughs> night shirt that my auntie Barbara penguin? gave me for Christmas. Like from Batman? Literally no, like a penguin, like a little Christmas thing, like below the knee <laughs> children's night shirt covered in penguins and Ugg boots. And I was like, I wanna come get my stuff. And he was like, not to be like weird, uh, but are you like lonely. the girl from <laughs> girl from T V? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, No. You're but he knew who I was. And that's just so you lied to your doorman that you're not on TV. But he knew who I was. He, he he was like, yeah, you are. And I was just standing there, just looking like real trash, you know, <laughs> like real bad, looking like, why are you wearing this? You're a grown up. But you, why do why do you lie? I I mean I don't know. I I <laughs> I got caught anyways. Although I had, do you ever? I had somebody come up to me uh, last weekend and say, I have a bet with my friend about whether you're Cat Tim or not because you look so different. He meant ugly. You know, on the weekends with my, I don't have my weave in on the weekends. I didn't even know you had a weave. I do. I clip it in. Oh wow! For sometimes. That's so. I didn't know white women did that. I thought yeah. that was like a like a black woman thing. No, a lot of a lot of women do it. Okay. You never know. You I never I don't know. know anything, so that sounded pretty ignorant. But he, uh, so you you what you, you don't wear the glasses on the weekend? No, not always, but sometimes because I I'm not very good at eye makeup. So I use them to cover up my face. Ah. You know, very, very, very important stuff. Everybody, Sam Morrell here. Call on in if you want to talk with us. 877-367-2526. I want to talk about another, another, this is an atrocity. Honolulu yeah. has a distracted walking ticket now. Okay. If you're on the phone, you can get a ticket for being in a crosswalk. And it starts minimum 15, but it can be up to 99 and $500. 99 for a third offense. How much? Five hundred for a third offense. Oh my god! You're, I'm texting all the time. Are you? Me are you too. like that? But it's dangerous. Yeah. You know, like it is. I, it's one of those things where I get really angry at people when they're doing it, but I do it all the time. Yeah, I do too. It's like the one second I'm not doing it is when I bust them. Yeah. And I'm like, how dare you? And then I just lo I go back to looking at my phone. Yeah. I mean, okay. So if you're in like a text messaging fight with someone, with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, <laughs> what's worse? To just because if you don't answer, then that's bad. That's right. really bad. You're gonna yell that, you know. Especially if you're the one who screwed up and you just stop answering, you're in big trouble. What's worse, that or getting a fine? I'd be having to make those decisions all the time. I got into a text fight with a girl I was dating, and I found out she was driving while we were doing it. <laughs> that's that's why I can't beat her in arguments because she's willing to die. You yeah. know, like that's that's it's that type of toughness that separates her. You know, I I text and walk, but I'm terrified. Yeah, I'm terrified that I'm gonna get hit by a car. So I, I like I half ass it. I look up the whole time. Yeah. Do you? Do you? Do you? I don't. Do you I, I'm, a, I'm glued to my phone the entire time. Aren't you scared you're gonna die though? I feel it's the worst way to die. Be getting mangled by a vehicle, and then yeah. also when you they find you with your phone, they can see the text, and it's probably something that they can just see the entire history of what I was talking about, why yeah. I died. That would be that would be terrible. Because they'd be looking into it. What was she? What was the last text she sent? And they'd be like, "Man, she's a mean girl." Real? Are you mean in your text? Sometimes. How? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll bring up. You know, you know, you fight with someone. You bring up past stuff. You know that doesn't really need to be brought up. You can do that from time to time. I've never heard of a woman doing that yeah. ever. Or the or uh, but I'll bring up past stuff. My favorite. I like to bring up past stuff that I haven't brought up before, but I've just locked in the file because we'll be having a nice night and maybe they'll say something that you don't really love or that can be interpreted a certain way. Do you hold you on really to love. stuff like that? Absolutely. Wow. Yes. And then I don't want to ever fight with you because I feel like you're gonna hit me well. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be sharp. Isn't it like that one time? <laughs> Where did you pick? Where did you pick that up? Who you been talking to? I didn't. I didn't know that you guys were even friends. You never brought it up. Why did you never you bring do it that? up? Oh yeah, that's like my biggest nightmare. Yeah, is like is the, I'm checking my phone and it goes like who's she? Uh huh. That's my biggest nightmare. You gotta say who's she? I know, but it's it's no it's no one. I'm not cheating. Yeah, I, I've never cheated on anybody in my life, but but that's maybe maybe that's why you're so jealous. Yeah. Because you're uh, because you're loyal. Have you been burned before like that? I've been burned before. Me too. Yeah. That's why I, I've never, but but if if, if you're w with your girlfriend and so you see a guy text, you, you would say who's that? Who's he? Right? Yeah. I mean, so I, everybody does it. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's you know you you want it's so much more healthy to not do that, but it's it's hard. I mean, look, everything on social media now is like, don't look. Or yeah. It's just you're just sometimes you just there's so much time there's so much access you're just digging for a fight sometimes. Yeah. So Whose just, picture did you like? Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why, you like that? Oh, you, that is that what you like? You know? <laughs> and it's like.
Why? Why am I doing this? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be like, I'll score the. What did you like? What did you like? Why did you? And then, and then, and then you like, okay, who is she? And then you like, you sit there and you know where she went to high school. You know, she I went know. to the prom with, and you're like, what am I doing with? Turns out it's like his cousin. It's like, what am I doing I with my life? I'm like, who's this guy? She's like a gay friend who yeah. I know from theater, and I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm still upset. <laughs> I don't know why, but but then you have nothing to do with that anger. You just have yeah. to like hold on to it. Absolutely. You're like, well, now I just feel stupid and I'm mad at myself. But I feel like I need to look at my phone all the time, no matter what I'm doing. So sometimes I'll fall into that trap. Also, with this walking thing, which is how we even got on this, yeah. I use Google Maps everywhere. Sure. I don't know where I'm going in the city. Especially if you get to like <laughs> Soho, where it's not it's not a number. Well, Soho, system. I understand, but around here, you know, it's where you're a going. grid. Yeah. I figured it out. It's a grid, and yeah. I kind of know now what's going on. But if it's not a grid, I mean, how am I supposed to know where to turn once I cross the street? No, you, you, it's uh, you bring up a fair point. It's also you bring up another good point about like to not be able to be on your phone is so difficult because I don't know, especially when I'm having a bad day. I feel like I just refresh and my life will get better, and it's just yeah. not the case. Yeah, but you just keep doing it, thinking like I'll get some good news if yeah. I keep refresh, and, and it doesn't come you post this sometimes i'll just post a little selfie you'll be like oh there you go. Well, that doesn't like, work for guys i got like four thousand <laughs> likes that's nice but then you look at it and it's like all grandfathers which <laughs> grandfathers if you're listening i do love you but you do know. you have a crazy grandfather fan base yeah dude I, I i have crazy i have a, I have a lot of dads and grandpas it's too bad you're not into that because that yeah. would be that would be a gold mine i'm not unfortunately <laughs> It would be a gold mine, but I'm not unfortunately. I don't know what that. the equivalent of that would be for me because I do think older women are attractive, but grandmothers would be probably a bit old for me. Be a stretch, but maybe yeah. like what, what would be like the oldest? The cutoff. I, it depends because in the because it, it depends by city because like here the women are like in New York the women are gorgeous you know yeah. so I, I don't know in the city they're very good like sometimes you go on the road and you're like oof yeah. you got weathered young you know yeah well you know what actually I think that in there's a lot of beautiful women in New York but there's not a lot of good looking guys. You don't I'm think gonna say so? it. no. It's, no, I don't think so. That might be fair. I, you might be right. I don't know. I mean, I, I, it is interesting that like I, if I go on like a dating app in the city, I'm like, oh my god, the women are gorgeous. And then I go on and like my opening joke in Buffalo is, I said, uh, man, uh, all the women here on Tinder look like Artie Lang. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so uh, it was true. <laughs> I stand by it. It was but, true. But you know, it's. Uh, yeah, I think you're probably right that they're better looking. There are more women, I feel like, here. Yeah. So that definitely helps the odds. And they're and, all in packs together. And they have, I mean, I feel like a guy can be chubby and get a hot girlfriend, whereas the other way around is, is definitely harder. It's not fair, but sure. it's probably true. It's not fair. Everything's on social media. Everything's on your phone. Even, you know, especially with the president that we have now. Yeah. We, I, you know, if we end up going to nuclear war, we'll find out on Twitter. Right. Well, that's how that's. So why can't I, I be on my phone? I mean, what, what do you do? The Trump tweets bother you? Do you do, do you ignore them? Do you laugh I think at them? They alleviate my stress. I think he's a low key guy. And mm. uh, now he's crazy. I mean, you can't <laughs> look at it. Of course not. It's like it's uh, it's so funny because like you always read things like well, he's always like, well, the media doesn't really capture who I really am. And that's like all these people are saying. They're like they don't get like their true true him. But it's like, well, who who is he really? I mean, it, I think. The Twitter does a pretty reasonable job, and that's him. Yeah, he actually, he does seem to, to blame the media a lot for, can we actually play uh, clip 21 real quick? Yeah. For you, should you be more civil as a leader of this country? Well, I think the press makes me more uncivil than I am. <laughs> You know, people don't yeah. understand. I went to an Ivy League college. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a nice student. I did very nice well. Yeah. Uh, I'm a very intelligent person. I, you know, I, the fact is, I think, I really believe, I think the press uh, creates a different image of Donald Trump than the real, the real person. Well, that sounded, that sounded unedited. So <laughs> I don't think they did. No, he, you know, it's uh, whenever someone says, like, I went to an Ivy League school, I hate that. Because that's yeah. like, I grew up in New York City and I get a lot of, I knew a lot of those people like, I'm from New York City. And it'd yeah. be like, yeah, who cares? Yeah. It's like, that's like a, it's like an advantage thing that people point to, but it's like, it doesn't make you good. That just means that you, he was born into a great situation. Right. Well, what I don't understand is how can both things not be true? Because the things that people are mad about are the tweets, which he says, I use Twitter because it's it won't be the media it won't be it won't be jumbled by the media and twisted into a narrative this comes straight from me this right. is me these tweets but then the thing that people often have the most problems with and think are the meanest are the tweets not the the media so yeah, i don't know how like, that works it, you know why i don't check it because it feels like just like a toxic relationship where mm. the person drains you only so you're just like if i look it's just gonna suck 
Yeah, I mean, I, I do. Have you gotten desensitized to it at all? Yeah, totally. I mean, it's. I mean, think about how crazy it is that we have a president that trolls people. Yeah, it hasn't even been a year. Maybe it's been a year about almost. You know. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, you have a president that called the. Uh, I mean, Rocket Man. Yeah, Rocket Man. That's pretty insane. See, we I, we had a lot of callers in the last block. That's and, one of like fifty th- names that he's come up with. Right, right. right. We have, we've, we've had a lot of call- callers in the last block that they disagree. They don't care. They just love Trump forever and ever. If you're someone who loves Trump forever and ever, or not, whatever. If you want to call in, we're about to go to break. Good time for you to call eight seven seven three six seven two five two six. I'm here with Sam Morrell. We'll be right back. Fox News Talk. Get involved. Speak your mind. Call in live. Eight seven seven three six seven twenty five twenty six. This is Fox News Talk. More next. Here's George Foreman, been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call one 800-359-7341. That's 1-800-359-7341. Again, 1-800-359-7341. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-611-5153. That's 800-611-5153. 800-611-5153. This is Fox News Talk. Headline Rewind. 1994. Senator Ted Kennedy. Jackie would have preferred to be just herself, but the world insisted that she be a legend too. Police in Anaheim say they are following a white Ford Bronco, and that is O.J. Simpson with a gun to his head. You guys have got to be strong because you are, I just know, I just feel in my heart that you're okay. But you've got to take care of each other. Susan Smith has been arrested and will be charged with two counts of murder in connection with the deaths of her children. It's not a Republican victory. It's not a Democratic victory. It is the American people making a set of choices. Can you get someone over here now to 325 Gretna Green? He's back. Please. Okay, what does he look like? He's O.J. Simpson. I think you know his record. News as it happened then. News as it happens now. This is Fox News Talk. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. It can ignite and destroy your home and even your community. To that ember, all those branches hanging over your roof might as well be giant matchsticks ready to spark. The pile of dry leaves and twigs clogging your gutters are the perfect kindling to start a fire. And all those debris piles and brush around your yard which you haven't taken care of yet are pure lighter fluid, ready to ignite. There are some fire hazards that aren't clearly marked and they can impact you and your neighbors. Learn to spot them because your home is better protected from wildfire damage when your whole community is prepared. Visit fireadapted.org for more tips on how to get started adapting your home and community to wildfires. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. 
Do you have pain in your elbows, knees, hips, and shoulders? Do you jog or exercise or suffer from arthritis or rheumatism? Now there's a new and exciting product that combines three potent ingredients to help you have a more pain-free and mobile life. Nature Seal Joint and Immune Complex can assist you in repairing and maintaining healthy joints. This product can lessen inflammation, lubricate joints, help rebuild cartilage, reduce healing time, and fight the pain of arthritis. The Nature Seal Company has combined their potent all-natural colostrum with two more powerful joint protectors, MSM and glucosamine HCL. Nature Seal Joint and Immune Complex is ideal for active people. Remember, deterioration of the joints can happen at any age, so protect your family. Order Nature Seal Joint and Immune Complex today. It comes with a money back guarantee. Call 866 PMI Order. Nature Seal Joint and Immune Complex is $29.95 for a 30 day supply. Or buy a 60 day supply for $59.95 and get a third bottle free. Call 1 866 PMI Order today. Hello, everybody. We're back now. We're uh, back now, I guess. Back sweet. on Fox News Talk. I'm Kat Temp. I'm here with Sam Morrell. And you can join in to 877-367-2526. If you have some constructive things to say, I'm looking at some of these, these comments. I have some guy named Joe that says, you are such a piece of expletive cat, expletive you. Those are not the kind of calls we're looking for. What? Got Why'd some he say guy that? named Joe. I don't know, but but he took his time to say this, and uh, looks like he has a dog, and looks like he's married. <laughs> wow! And uh, his uh, you know he's got a dog and a wife, and he hates Cat Tiff. Boo! <laughs> he hates her. Boo! So you know we get with the messages sent. Thank you, Joe, very much. Very very nice. I do have a family. Thank you. Um, so, well, let's talk a little bit about this uh, this Tr Trump Jeff Flake situation. Yeah. Yesterday, obviously, uh, Jeff Flake hit Trump pretty hard, and then and Trump, Trump hit Trump hit back. Let's play let's play clip eight again, please. That's just that's such a Trump. He was against me from before he ever knew me. He wrote a book about me before I ever met him, before I ever heard his name. Uh, his poll numbers in Arizona are so low that he couldn't win. And I don't blame him for leaving. I think he did the right thing for himself. But if you know, long before he ever knew me, during the campaign, even before the campaign, I mean, he came out with this horrible book. And I said, who is this guy? <laughs> Pretty classic stuff. <laughs> Pretty horrible book. Again, I talked about this with Joe a little bit. The fact that you don't know someone doesn't mean that you can't not like them. For example, this other guy, this guy who hates me on the internet, totally valid. I don't know if it's valid, but yeah, it's it's, it's a funny insult. Like, I don't even know you. And you're yeah. like, all right, well, that's that's cool. Yeah. He, I like this insult on uh, on Corker, right? yeah. where he, he said that guy couldn't win, he could win an election to be a dog catcher. Which we don't do anymore. <laughs> I, and also, I don't even think, like, I don't even know what that means. Like, I feel like dogs are hard to catch. Why yeah. is that an insult? Yeah, that, that they are hard to catch. They're slippery and fast. Yeah, so animals, animal control is a tougher job than we give them credit for. <laughs> it's we should hard. be diminishing the men and women of animal control. But yeah, who, who's this is... I guess it is. It does sting a little because like, yeah. if you text someone and they're like, "Wait, who is this?" Even if, even though you may have gotten like your iCloud wiped out, you're still. It still hurts. It still hurts. Let's. He just said. Let's play clip number nine too. He he kept going. He would have never won. In fact, even in the primary, he's way down in the primary. Yeah. So he did the smart thing for himself. This way, he can get out somewhat gracefully. But you know. <laughs> He's saying that because he has nothing else to say. But I, I do think this. I do think this. I wish him well. I really believe he's going to do the I right thing for the country. I very, like very it's low. Wish Trump, him well. He talks. Trump talks about people the way mobsters talk about people <laughs> in like a movie where they're like, I hope he dies. I hope his kids die. Good guy, though. I don't mean no disrespect. Good guy, yeah. though. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's so funny that the reporters, Trump doesn't stop speaking, so they all just sound like birds. Yeah. <laughs> they can't get a word in. Yeah. And you know what, though? It, he would have lost, I think. Yeah, he would have definitely lost, but it's it's still, like, probably... It's probably bad that he dropped out for everybody. Yeah. You know, because... Uh, I agree. He's like part of the old guard, kind of. Yeah. You know, and and now it's probably going to be someone who's even further right, or who just fits what what Trump likes. Yeah. You have to buddy up. 
Exactly. And, you know, he, he said he did it for the children, but you never quit for the children unless you're quitting <laughs> drugs or something like that. That's the you only thing you should ever. You don't quit your career for kids. You don't quit your career for the children. You hear that, everybody? All right. Take we'll be it from us, two people with no kids. <laughs> yeah, no kids. We know how to raise your children. Call us, 877-367-2526, Fox News Talk. Now starting for Carlisle at running back, defensive back, punter, and place kicker is... And winning the gold in the pentathlon and decathlon is... Now playing for the New York Giants in the outfield is... The winner of the intercollegiate ballroom dance competition is... Named as first team All-National Football League is... Jim Thorpe, All-American, Native American. And he raised the bar for every American. Excellence. Pass it off from the Foundation for a Better Life at Values.com. Fox News Talk presents Political Pop. No. A recent Pew survey found that 56% of us believe it's possible to be moral and ethical without religious beliefs. In short, without God. Pastor Stan Mitchell of Grace Point Church in Nashville, Tennessee agrees. He explains, since we're all God's creation, even if we don't acknowledge God, we can still reflect His goodness. People are created in the image of God. And whatever your theology is concerning a fall or depravity, I think those are only layers on an inherent goodness. But Pastor Shane Eidelman of Westside Christian Fellowship in California says being good can only be measured against an objective source of ultimate goodness and that can only be God. If there's a good there's an evil so you have to have God in the equation to properly define good so it's possible to do good things but at the same time you can't divorce what actually is good from God. For Fox on Faith, Lauren Green, Fox News. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by feedthepig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up, just like that. Giving up on what? I'm getting an inheritance from a distant relative. Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me, we are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler, using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right, which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Now, from the historical audio archives of Fox News Talk. Reverend Jesse Jackson made a run for the presidency in 1984. In a speech, he apologized for remarks made referring to New York as, quote, Heimie Town. If in my high moments I have done some good, shed some light, healed some wounds, if in my low moments, in word, deed, or attitude, through some error of temper, taste, or tone, I have caused anyone discomfort, created pain that was not my truest self. If there were occasions when my grape turned into a raisin and my jaw bear lost its resonance, please forgive me. Charge it to my head and not to my heart. Stay tuned to hear more history as it unfolds before your ears. It's the audio archives of Fox News Talk. Computer security threats such as spam, spyware, viruses, and hackers invade your business every day through email, instant messaging, web browsing, and your company's website. With no software to install and no per-user license fees, Barracuda Network's firewalls are easy to set up and affordable. Do what 50,000 other companies have done. Reclaim your network with a Barracuda Network's firewall. For a free evaluation unit called Barracuda Networks, 888-ANTI-SPAM, 888-ANTI-SPAM, or go online to barracuda.com.
everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Fox News Talk. I'm here with comedian Sam Morell. Yes. Yes. And you can be here too if you call in 877 367 2526. It's great. We had a lot of calls on these blocks. A lot of people, they love. So. They love Trump. Now, when you go on the road, do you meet people who love Trump? Because yeah, I know of you. So I'm not a, really a political comic. I kind of yeah. just talk about my like observations and stories and stuff. But like, yeah, of course. I mean, you go. He won. He won the election. You yeah. Meet, you meet people who, who like him. Yeah. I, so I'm a libertarian. So I like never love a, any political candidate. Okay. I never. I'm never like because they don't ever fully agree with how I feel. So it's not new to me to be like, ugh, the president. I've right. been like, ugh, the president for every president. Okay. So, you know, I don't know, but I, I think it's weird that people I, I get why people like him. I don't. But I, I when the way people talk about him. I mean, I get why you like him as a human. I think it's a weird it's a weird uh, choice to lead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, people people like the for him. No F words. Oh, sorry. But that you uh, that he just like <laughs> <laughs> use him as a crutch when you're hungover. But uh, no, he just broke the. Uh, it felt like written dialogue always when politicians talked, and I guess that people liked that he kind of sound. Well, he he was off the cuff. That he was not. Uh, it didn't feel like as much of a puppet, but. Instead of a puppet, he seems like unhinged and he's unraveling, and th so there's bad things there. He says everything's. He thinks that it's it's not a mess. Can we play. He thinks that everything is just fine. Can we play clip twenty eight real quick? Well, the economy's all right, but <laughs> but there's other fears. Yeah, there's we other great fears. Unity. If you look at what happened yesterday at the meeting, we had I guess virtually every senator, uh, including John McCain. We had a great conversation yesterday, John McCain and myself, about the military. I think we had a, a I called it a love fest. It was almost a love fest. Maybe it was a love fest. So we had standing ovations. There is great unity. I mean, if you look at the Democrats with Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, that's a mess. There's great unity in the Republican Party. Great unity in the Republican Party. Yeah. At the lunch where immediately after some, you know, someone essentially quit his job because right. of Trump. Right, and uh, and it doesn't seem like McCain likes him. I mean, no. maybe they agreed on something, but he he doesn't seem to care for him, and I don't think he did ever since the I prefer war heroes that weren't captured comment. Right, yeah. I mean, especially as somebody who never served, I understand right. how that could... And, and Megan is a, is a good friend of mine, and I can understand how hearing that, I'd be like, wait, what? Yeah. But did you ever think... I mean... You, you you say now you think that's upsetting. Did you ever think it was funny? Because uh, Trump, yeah, at the beginning, sure, right. Yeah, I mean it was it was a funny idea, but then but then it, when it became a point, I didn't think he'd win. I really was one of those people. That I'm like, there's no way. And then I was shocked. I was, uh, I I was pretty much blackout drunk. Like this is insane. And then you yeah. woke up the next day and it looked like children of men outside. <laughs> you know, you're like wow, this might be it. This is really. There was someone who, who was captured and and he he was released and he didn't believe that Trump was the president when they told him. I mean, like, what a time to wake up out of a coma or be released, but because and nobody believed it. I certainly didn't believe it. Yeah, it, I guess it was funny for a while, and now that it's real, it's one of those things where you're like, ah, we should get different taste and humor. You yeah, know? but uh, he, he's still loved. I mean, I think the people that really love him are going to stand by him and just. And you know, till till it ends. I think that he's going to be reelected. Do you? I really do. I mean, I, I don't hear... know who's going to run for the Democrats at least yet. It doesn't seem like they have it in order at all. Well, that's the issue, right? Who's yeah. going to Who's going to run against them? Nobody knows. I've heard uh, Harris is one person I've heard about, but that's the only name I've even heard brought up. I don't I don't know who's who's a possibility it's still pretty far out i guess the funny thing is like time has really slowed down it's still like three years away but i know you want to hear some murmurs at least you want to hear some murmurs. i mean he hasn't yeah like you said it hasn't even been a full year yet think of what's going to happen within <laughs> all the tweets that we're going to still have with you know within the next year but you know Do you think he's going to make it till the end of the term i think so i think he is too a lot of people don't i think it's i think it's like he's not going any, it's like ego at this point it's like a game of chicken yeah, I don't think he wants to be there, but he's also like, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to go anywhere. I don't think he thought he would win. No way. At all. He looked surprised at <laughs> the night of the election. He looked like he was like, wow, 
Okay. <laughs> it's like when you ask, it's like when you like, there's like a gig you don't want to do and you're like, well, ask for this much money because that way I don't have to do it. And then yeah. they pay you and you're like, all right then. Guess I'm going to wherever the I heck it is. I'm going to Wichita. <laughs> yeah. I've been to, I went to, was, was in Wichita one time for a wedding. Yeah. How it was, was it? It was Wichita. It was, you know, <laughs> yeah. we were trying to go out like the night before the wedding and it was like, where do people go? What do they do? But I guess, I mean, it must be like in some ways a better life living in the Midwest than in New York. Yes, of course it is. You this know, is a horrible quality of life. We're crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is insane. This is, I, I, I sneezed on someone on the subway today. You did yeah. on someone. That's how close we were. I didn't do it on purpose, but it just sneaked past a little bit of my hand and, and he, he nearly punched me. Really? But that's the, that's the life you live in New York, that claustrophobic mess. Yeah, you don't have that in the Midwest. You don't. Maybe in Chicago, a little. Maybe a little bit in Detroit, yeah. where I'm from. There's a little bit of that, but but then again, people, a lot of these people. What is it, the the flyover states? Is what they they love. They love President Trump. They're all about Trump because they they feel like they're in the flyover states and they've been forgotten. And there's finally this guy right. is talking about what matters to them. And is there anything you think that President Trump could do? to get a supporter to stop supporting him one of the hardcore supporters i don't know i think the military stuff and the football stuff like for a second <laughs> that like made it interesting i was like hoping you'd go after nascar <laughs> <laughs> i was like please just say something but uh now i i think these people are ride or die with him you know the football thing was when there was a sec it was like a second where it, it's a little weird when he's like you better do this or you're fired like that, yeah. that type of tone is where you're like all right, but that's insane. You can't just fire everyone because you're the president. Like, that's not in the Constitution. It's, you don't say you get to fire whoever you want in the country. But he kind of acts like... And he's also a guy who says far more ridiculous things than any of these players. Yeah, that's absolutely is true. So it's like, you know, but that's his, that's his vibe. He's a hypocrite, obviously. But people like that because, and I think that the more people say, oh, Trump's crazy, the more a lot of these people who support him are like, we're not crazy. I think that what probably lost Hillary Clinton the election was the uh, basket of deplorables comment. Right. Because they're yeah. like, well, I like Trump. I'm not a racist. What's wrong with me? Right. I think there's definitely a sector she was talking about that that that's absolutely accurate 100 percent. but at the same time yeah it's there's like a smug liberalism i think that really and you know i identify as i skew far more liberal than that but there's a way liberals deal with arguments where they like laugh off points yeah like, oh please it's like can feel very condescending and hillary had that vibe sometimes mm -hmm. and that deplorables comment just reeked of that so yeah. that that hurt her and the fact that she didn't really have a message other than i'm not trump and that's not and i've heard that a million times but it's just the truth it's just he you have to have your own campaign message other than just i'm not him yeah that was all that was all it was i'm not him and i thought she like point for point destroyed him in the debates but and he looked foolish i thought but at the same time it just wasn't enough. I mean, people hate her. People really hate her. They do. Why do you think that is? Um, I think a lot of reasons. I think she has a lot of baggage. I mean, it doesn't really seem to stop, right? Like, even today that came out that, that dossier that her campaign paid for it. Right. When they had denied over and over again that they paid for it. I mean... Uh, getting opposition research is a very normal thing to do. So it's kind of like, why did you lie about that? Well, I think uh, some a reason a lot of people don't like her is because she, you know, she's a career, f to them, she feels like a career politician because she's mm -hmm. been doing it. I mean, she's not, but she's been at it for so long, it feels that way. And then uh, I think the standing by Bill, I think, I think yeah. hurt her, which is weird because, you know, marriages or relationships are complicated you don't know the ins and outs but uh i don't think that scored her a lot of points i think there was i think she is the victim of some misogyny for sure where it's like oh you you weren't satisfying him in some way and you stuck by him and uh maybe people saw her as an opportunist because of that and i i don't think it was all about the emails i think that was what sunk her but like don't i think the other stuff really outweighed and now they're yeah. going to open another investigation into her Russia connections as well. Right, the uranium the, stuff. The uranium right. stuff, which is also, it's not cool to sell, you know, essentially sell uranium to Russia and get money to your foundation. That is shady stuff. But I'm also someone who thinks some of the things that all Trump has done is shady. shady it's, though, all, right? it's a slush fund. The, the, yeah, I mean, the, the Clinton Foundation has done some shady stuff. And, and look, there are people that we all know they like their money. They live in Chappaqua. They... they 
Uh, they, she gets those gig, those speaking gigs where they charge insane money, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they earned they earned a lot of it. You know, you you get to a certain point, you've earned a lot of those speeches. You've you make that money. I mean, there's people that are addicted to the power, and there are people that are addicted to the money, and I think they're both. Yeah, I mean, I would take as much money for a speech. <laughs> As someone would give me yeah. I'm not gonna I mean I I don't have a lot of money but I do like what I have I like to buy things it's fun with it, it makes you, know? you feel better money yeah it does. it's also like certain times you get paid for a gig and like I'm you know doing jokes on stage or something and I get and I'm, and I'm like if it's like a corporate gig sometimes I bomb yeah and uh, <laughs> you get the money and you're like I feel terrible <laughs> I'm just taking these people's money but uh, at the same time, then you spend the money and it feels good. Yeah, there you go. I mean, would you do a gig for a lot of money for an evil foreign government? <sighs> I hate to, I, I'd be I'm assuming scared. you'll face this at some point. I, I, I might. But I'm scared that, like, they're going to hate me. I'm scared it's going to be like a trap. Mm. Like, they'll hate my comedy. Like, I did I remember and I did a gig. they'll cut your head off. I did an all Shabab <laughs> joke. And I remember it was, like, I did on Comedy Central. And it was, like, the week, that week it came out, I got offered a gig at Mall of America, which was the week that all shabab was like threatening to shoot up the mall and i was oh. like i'm not taking it oh it just felt not it, worth it and i told my friend and he was like look it's you're probably not going to die but if you do <laughs> die you're the dumbest person ever <laughs> for like that it's going to be a funny obituary absolutely all right well we have a caller terry from white plains new york how's it going hi how are you doing great i'm really enjoying the show but i have to say both of you are wrong about hillary oh well we, what do you got terry well i think it's just a lot simpler than all the complicated stuff. I think Hillary's just an arrogant, angry woman. And I think that American housewives and house husbands like myself just got tired of her arrogance and probably would have voted for Genghis Khan had he been running. Well, there's a thing. Genghis <laughs> Khan. I, I probably would not have voted for, for Genghis Khan no matter what, but she did have some arrogance, Sam. The whole, you know, the whole, why aren't I 50 points ahead thing? Right. It's like, well, nobody really owes you that. Well, see, I'm a little older than you are. I, I, I'm 60 now, so... A little older. I, My I've birthday seen, is coming up, though. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen Hillary ever since uh, she was the first lady of the United States, and I didn't like her then. Uh, so, I mean, you know, and, and then as Secretary of State with the whole Benghazi thing, and I, she was more interested in her telephone than she was answering questions from senators. No. Again, I mean, th th she's arrogant. I, th you could say that. I mean, but everyone's arrogant. Politicians, yeah, right? They're like all arrogant. It's not like I wouldn't call Trump uh, a, a humble arrogant. man. Right. I mean, it's it's. I think people just didn't like her. I think that's what it came down. I think the way even he said, uh, "woman." She's mm -hmm. an angry woman. It sounded like a slur. A I'm bit. an angry woman. Yeah, but it's like a little bit. I think she is the victim of misogyny. And, and when people, people people say arrogant, it's like Trump is far more arrogant than she is. I, he's he's ridiculous. I think there was this kind of air, and it, it is crazy. She's that, an air about her for sure. I mean, there's like there is an elitism for sure, but Trump is a brash. Uh, yeah. elitist, don't you think? But with her, I think it was this idea that she was owed the votes, you know? And I don't think right, Trump like it was that like same. it was Like it was her time. Yeah, like, the, okay. well, that's not how we do things here. You gotta get people to vote for you. Sure. Alright, we're gonna go on a quick break. She didn't go to the Rust Belt places to really right, earn it. Right, exactly. She didn't earn it. She just said, I understand you know, that. Mine. I understand that argument. But, I, but, the, but the arrogance thing and then voting for Trump to me makes no sense. I understand if you, you understand. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. Everybody call and tell us how you feel about all this. 877-367-2526. Your talk, your voice, your show. This is Fox News Talk. 877-367-2526. More next. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow 
allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-611-5153. That's 800-611-5153. 800-611-5153. Dear John, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you've left me no choice. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is really serious, and lately you seem to really not care. I've been there for you since day one, and I know you think I'm going to keep ticking. But no, my friend, I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to the good times? when we were more active and ate more healthy foods and you checked on me every once in a while. Is that too much to ask? I don't want to leave, but unless you stop ignoring me, what else am I supposed to do? Remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Doing the minimum to control your high blood pressure isn't doing enough. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. Check, change, control. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Last night we put on an epic light show. Yeah, we did. The crowd loved us. We love the crowd. Wait, but there were only four people out there. Yeah, but did you see their four faces? All eight of their eyes lit up brighter than ours. <sighs> and we're fireflies. Yeah, we are. Hey, that one girl, she looked like she'd never seen glow in the dark like this before. And we invented glow in the dark. Yeah, we invented it. And we're going to be out here every night rocking out our light show in a forest near you. Woo-hoo! So come check us out. Check us out. And bring your kids. All ages show. Oh, but uh, don't bring any of those glass jars because they make us kind of nervous. Can I'm super claustrophobic. Whether you're rocking their world or they're rocking yours, some memories never fade. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you and discover other cool things to do when you go, like fishing, biking, or even camping. Visit discovertheforest.org. See you later. Yeah, see you soon. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Gentlemen, how would you like to be able to order Viagra, Levitra, or Cialis in the comfort of your own home? Now it's as quick and easy as a phone call to metameds.com. Just call 800-929-2699. In a couple of minutes over the phone, we'll ask you a few questions pertaining to your health. Your medical information will be reviewed by a doctor, and upon approval, your product will be shipped to your door. It's simple, discreet, and will save you time and money. For as little as $6 a dose, you can order Viagra, Levitra, or Cialis and have it delivered to your home in three to five business days. Call now to 800-929-2699 or go to metameds.com, M-E-D-A-M-E-D-S dot com. Call 800-929-2699. Call now and ask about the new revolutionary sublingual tablets, the quicker and easier way of taking Viagra. Isn't it about time you tried Viagra, Levitra, or Cialis? Just call MetaMeds at 800-929-2699. That's 800-929-2699. Or go to M-E-D-A-M-E-D-S dot com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fox News Talk. I'm here with my buddy, Sam Morrell. Yo. If you want to join, call in 877-367-2526. We have a caller, John from Bedford. How's it going? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hello? Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can totally hear you. Can you hear me okay or not? I can hear you great. I don't think he can hear me, though. Too bad. Didn't work. Didn't work. I really wanted to know what John had to say, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. We're getting a lot of good, we're getting a lot of good feed. We're getting a lot of good feedback, Sam. You know, we're doing we're just doing a great job here. We're doing I a great like job. We are. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, when we're talking about President Trump, Hillary Clinton, President, do you think everybody is a hypocrite in the situation? Um, I don't know if everyone is. I mean, you just you're you're allowed to like who you like i mean that's what it is i guess but uh i just find yeah i find a lot of the people probably are hypocritical i would say sure yeah because you know 
Trump's Russia story changed a lot, and his you know his campaign story changed a lot, and then when this dossier story changed, let's play let's play clip number one. Well, I think it's very sad what they've done with this big dossier. It was made up, and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money, and Hillary Clinton always denied it. The Democrats always denied it. And now only because it's going to come out in a court case, they said, yes, they did it, they admitted it, and they're embarrassed by it. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really, a very, it's a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. Yeah, I, I, I agree that it's totally bad that her campaign kept switching stories when it comes to Russia, but it's bad that his did it too. Yeah, I mean, they, I did a lot of the same stuff, I guess, but he is like, he's just such a cartoon character. Like, <laughs> I just miss, I miss having like, personally, I think she's like, she has qualities that annoy me, but she's a human being and I just don't think he's a human being. I think he's mm. like, and that's a, opinion based, obviously, but like, I want a president who doesn't sell those stupid hats on a website mm. like he, so you don't have one you don't wear it to sleep at night. i, know. Is that what you're I have the me? halloween one oh. i have the orange one but oh, um okay. no i don't have one but it's uh i don't know i don't and his wife like say what you want about michelle obama but at least she was like doing stuff what does his wife do i would i mean but do you think she didn't maybe she didn't think she was gonna have to be a first lady oh she definitely thought she was gonna have to live quietly rich <laughs> yeah she definitely expected to do nothing but that but still i'm like i don't know I, it, Melania, I... I don't like what Michelle did with the lunches. You don't like if that? If I was a kid and I had to eat you're the lunches... Healthy, you're a healthy eater, though. I mean, sometimes I am. Sometimes I eat, like, garbage. But when I was in high school, I would have squirt, as in the pop. Oh, yeah. And french fries for lunch I every day. I thought that was going to be, like, a dirty joke no, or something. I was like, no. <laughs> squirt and is, fries. like, the yogurt stuff? Yeah, it's, no, it's, like, lemon-lime soda. Oh, and I french like fries, that. and that's all that. I would eat. Oh. And then sometimes like two or three bags of combos, and I turned out just fine. When you're a kid, you eat like garbage. Yeah, I guess, I mean, look, if I was a parent, I'd probably be different about it, because like, but I don't care what other people's kids eat. But if I had, if I had a kid, I'd try to have meat healthy. Have them eat vegetables and all that? Yeah, but You're going to be it, a great dad someday. Listen yeah, to you, you're going to have meat vegetables. I think, yeah, if I, have a, I mean, I don't want to... Yeah, if you just if one of those parents who are just giving them like fruit roll ups every meal or lunchables, you're like, you should read a nutritional fact. They're not, you know, they're yeah. not great for you. I used to pretend fruit roll up was a retainer and I would take it out, I'd like mold it onto the roof of my mouth and put it on my desk. I got in big trouble it for that. It was yummy. That, they I said, like Kat, that. you're disgusting. <laughs> I like, I like the, uh, Th those lunchables were so good, but I I rebelled. I was like one of those guys. My parents would never let me eat too much dirty stuff, so I would I would try to win the uh, McDonald's Monopoly game. Am I getting played off here like the Oscars? Yeah, well, it's, it's time to go. <laughs> All right. But thank you for joining us. Was it was fun. wonderful. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. But we'll be back. Eight seven seven three six seven two five two six. If you want to join. Yep. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. Oh. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This is Fox News Talk. Headline Rewind. 1974. Hank Aaron breaks Babe Ruth's record. And delivering. a contradiction when the executive branch is both investigatory and the subject of investigation. It is these events that forced the House, by a vote of 410 to 4, to set in motion this impeachment inquiry. Greatness comes not when things go always good for you, but the greatness comes and you're really tested when you take some knocks some disappointments. I, Gerald R. Ford, President of the United States, have granted 
and by these presents do grant a full, free, and absolute pardon unto Richard Nixon. News as it happened then, news as it happens now. This is Fox News Talk.